So once again, this video starts with us at the Renaissance Hotel, just outside of London Heathrow. We came down the night before just to position ourselves nice and close to the airport, ready for today's flight, which is a British Airways flight in Club World, over to Nassau at the Bahamas. So really short Uber ride later, we found ourselves at Terminal 5. Check-in was relatively smooth. Because of the amount of flights we've taken, we've been lucky enough to trigger the gold level. So whilst flying club class, we'd actually get to use the first class check-in wing and come through to the British Airways Gallery's first lounge. This is the medium of the three lounges available. There's the normal galleries, the galleries first, which is this one, and then the Concorde room, which is for first passengers only. So we managed to um, grab a few drinks, a few bites to eat. I really find the lounges set me up for a holiday really nicely. They kind of let me start decompressing and getting ready for the trip. Um, yeah, so we spent a couple of hours in here, quite a few drinks and a little bite to eat. And then before long, it was time to head down and pick up the flight. So if you're flying out of Terminal 5, you'll be at either A, B or C gates. The A gates are nice and easy to get to and are part of the main terminal. But the B and C gates, you have to go downstairs and get onto a shuttle bus or a uh, monorail for that. So it's a bit of a juggling act to maximise your time in the lounge and drinking free, free beer and wine, as opposed to travelling over to the gate and then getting stuck there for 5-10 minutes prior to boarding. Always a bit of a juggling act. We were on the C gates, which is the furthest away. You just head down the elevator here or the escalator and you get onto a tram over to your gate. So this is our plane for today, a Boeing 777. We were flying Club World and that you couldn't actually buy a first class ticket on the seat. So I was surprised to see a um, plane that also had first class in it. But that's more pertinent for the return journey, which we'll talk about. So today's flight is the very comfortable um, British Airways Club Suite. Um, it's their newest offering for Club World products or business products. Fully flat bed, um, quite a comfortable suite actually, led to a, a really enjoyable flight. And after about a seven hour flight and a 25, 35 minute transfer on the ground, we arrived at Atlantis um, on Paradise Island in Nassau. I've previously stayed at the Atlantis in Dubai and was expecting a very similar theme. Here you can see the main entrance, check-in desks left and right. Uh, very grand entrance uh, leading into a really nice lobby uh, seating area, which you can get some great views of the aquariums. Uh, all Almost 360 panoramic views, really. Really nice lobby, really spacious, really airy. Very comparable to Dubai at the moment. Um, there will be a few differences which I'll run through. I suppose the easiest one to start off with is in the Atlantis in the Bahamas, there is quite a large casino, quite a large gambling area. Um, I like that sort of thing, so it was a, an extra thing for us to do in the evenings. And actually, I had a, uh, a fairly big win, actually a very big win for me, which is in the region $700 on the first night. So yeah, really took the edge off some of the stuff that comes later in the video. Just kind of walking through the communal area here, a bar on the right, I think it was called Plato's Bar. Nice chilled out seating area there for... Um, people to feel during the day and then the bar itself was a um, really nice bar impeccable service from the barman i have to say really really enjoyed my time in there um, and just for reference it is also a cashless resort everything has to be charged to the room or put on a credit card so we'd actually booked a um, imperial club lounge room well as i thought it was an imperial club lounge room turns out it was just a club room so this is the uh, the real difference between the Dubai Atlantis and the um, Nassau one, is that there is no club lounge in Nassau. The club rooms are nicer, larger, very well um, done, but there's no club lounge, so there's no happy hours, there's no snacks or anything you can access during the day. I didn't know this before I booked, and truthfully, had I have known that, I wouldn't have booked this grade of room. Um, it's my fault. No one sold me a pup here. I just assumed... Um, that the Atlantis in Dubai and the Atlantis in Bahamas would mirror each other. Yeah, lesson learnt because they don't. Uh, there's no club lounge and there's no real perks other than a larger room. With that said, the room itself was um, really nice, really spacious, really well done out. It did smell a little damp, um, but I guess that's because of the air conditioning and the climate. So um, I suppose just going back to the, the club level stuff, um, I'd kind of booked the club level room thinking that we'd get sort of two or three hours a day um, with free drinks, uh, snacks, so it would minimise the cost and expenditure while we're there. But that really wasn't the case. Um, you just get the room and that's about it, really. 
Um, I was a little bit upset and grumpy about that because uh, it was going to lead to quite a lot more expenditure for the ho- for the holiday. But I've got no one else to blame. I just really want to stress they don't overtly say this anywhere when you're booking it. Um, so I would just urge you to do your research. I, I fell short a little bit here and normally I'm quite good at that sort of thing. But um, yeah, it didn't let it spoil the, the trip or the holiday. It was um, a really good trip nonetheless. The room itself was really nice, is really nice. Um, probably rambling quite a lot now. So I'll shut up and let you look around the room. So the club rooms certainly feel very modern, uh, as if they've been refurbed very, very recently, actually. Really well set up, loads of plug sockets and USB sockets throughout the suite. Um, really well kind of set up, uh, really geared up for mod- modern families and modern people with lots of electronic devices. So yeah, the room itself was really nice. It's just a shame about the lack of lounge benefits. So moving on to the resort itself. I suppose, well, let's just start with the fact it's flipping huge. There's probably about four or five, maybe even six hotels on the whole plot itself, um, all with different tastes and different setups. There's two of them in the distance, and pretty much everything you can see there is the Atlantis Resort. So there's loads of different pools catering to different needs, whether it's kind of adults only, children's pools, those with bars involved. So... um, there's a lot of walking between the places that you can do uh, loads of different sites and different themed areas really um i suppose overall the the main one that people see is what you're looking at now which is um probably what people expect from the atlantis but there are various different things really clean um i have to say we were there during kind of a, a stormy season uh, as you can probably see from the skies it was a bit mixed weather but the resort itself was kept immaculately everything was open everything was um well groomed and well prepared the staff were incredibly helpful um we didn't venture down to the beach because it was blowing a bit bit of a hoolie on the day we were filming um but yeah it's a really big result and ultimately if you're there for quite a while you can vary your, your surroundings quite easily and loads of activities whether it be water sports diving in the um in little lagoons and lakes and aquariums or whether it be going out seeing pedalos etc so lots to do lots to occupy your time um it really is a five-star result for me personally i do think the atlantis in the dubai is a, a notch above this one so if you are considering between the two i would probably suggest that the dubai one is just that that little bit better a little bit more exclusive a uh, little bit more high-end um yeah, but a really enjoyable time. I have to say, after my initial disappointments of the club lounge, yes, I am going to go there again because there's still signs up all over the place showing you that the club level is on level 19 uh, and the lounge is even still there. It's just locked and not in use. Food-wise, there's probably um, probably seven or eight different restaurants, all different themes, and then there's a lovely kind of harbour set in the back of the Atlantis. Some truly phenomenal boats there. There must have been millions and millions, if not billions of pounds but it does create a nice little kind of walkthrough. There's a few shops, a few restaurants, different catering sort of style. And at night, they really do put some entertainment on that, that kind of brings the atmosphere and the vibe alive. So yeah, I have to say, really, really well done. Um, certainly kind of keeps keeps your attention and gives you some variety throughout your trip. Um, loads of different art pieces around inside, if that uh, floats your boat. Um, for us, it was generally just stuff to walk by. But actually, look, overall, don't let my um, disappointment around the club level bring you down. It's a really nice place to go. It's certainly a five-star resort. I do think the Dubai one's a smidge better, if that's what you're considering. Um, I'd probably go to that one rather than this one. But generally speaking, a good vibe, nice American vibe to it. Um, Yeah. So I suppose the only other thing of note is to mention the number of cruise ships that stop at Nassau, in particular at the Atlantis. Uh, Sometimes you can have three or four in a day, and that does lead to some peak demand. However, a lot of or some of the areas in the hotel are actually reserved for um, residents only. So even on those busy days, there are still areas that you can go that's relatively quiet. Um, And the weather, whilst we were there pretty much during a stormy season, it was still lovely and warm um, and still able to catch a bit of a tan. Before we knew it, our time was up and we were due to head back home. We did have a bit of trouble checking in uh, for BA on the flight back, which we were a bit concerned about, but we needn't have been because it was actually for a positive reason. 
Uh, we were actually upgraded into BA first on the way back. It was still a business product, but they um, did sit us in the first seats. Uh, still a bit bamboozled as to why there was a plane with first class on it that they weren't selling, but I guess they've got their reasons. Led to a nice little benefit on the way back from the holiday um, and kind of really finished it off nicely. So look, thanks very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe to the channel. It means a lot and hopefully we can continue to grow in the future.